everyone. <laughs> you won't know where I am, Byron. I've been doing all sorts of wonderful things like uh, playing with carcasses. So before I show you what I'm about to show you, it might be a little bit gruesome. the carcass because I found where the stomach was so we're gonna have a look will you oh my, I can't because <laughs> look what I did I'm attached I got stuck I'm not gonna hold my breath <gasps> just jokes okay wait what should we do first save the foot okay let's have a look at the foot quite interesting I've never seen a porcupine foot up close this is the first time for me I'm also gonna try and um, not gag the stench that is coming from this porcupine not great. I'm also trying to strangle myself with the various cables. It's going to sound very muffled. No, I'm joking. I won't speak like that. But how great is this? Look at the foot. I can't tell you the front end from the back end right now just because there's very little of this porcupine left to be able to distinguish uh, between the two. I think this might be a back foot though. Uh, you can see, look at the beautiful big pads. Now you can put the track in the sand that we often show you to the actual porcupine. Maybe you can make a collage of the two. You can show what the foot looks like now and then also show what the, the footprint in the sand looks like. I think it would be quite a nice uh, comparison. So very powerful claws. Uh, if I can describe them in a way to you, it's like a dog's claw. If you have a Jack Russell at home, the claws are about the same size, almost the same length and colour. They obviously are worn down from the various terrain that it's been walking on, so they keep them nice and short. Remember, they also are very good diggers. They dig down. Most of the things that they're feeding on are roots. Now, amazing, right? Don't you think? Not particularly big feet. You can see from the size of my hand, it's quite small. And you may see a few things wriggling around on here. I can't see maggots. There's just lots of ants that are eating it. And the quills actually come out very easily. Look at this. No, of course, that one that I pull now is not going to come out. There we go. That worked quite well. I'm not going to touch the other end of it though because I don't have anything to wash my hands with. Haven't seen much devil's uh, thorn around either to use as an antiseptic. So when a leopard or any predator goes to attack something like a porcupine, ideally you want those quills to come out as quickly and as easily as possible. You don't want to be attached to the leopard, or to the lion. You want those uh, weapons to stab off, cause a bit of pain, and then you want an opportunity to run away. So they come out fairly easy. As you can see, very nice. It'll be quite good to come and actually collect a few. Great for decorations around the lodges. Of course, they were used as quills at one point too. Then, a woodpecker or something has just joined us. No, turtle doves. Then we've got over here, let me walk a little bit closer. Not too close though, because there's lots of flies and I don't want the flies to go on my face. Look at the stomach. I'm trying to work out what's actually inside it. It looks like dog food. Don't you think, Sebastian, from there? All this stuff over here, it looks like dog food, wet dog food. It also looks like perhaps some type of bran cereal. Not anything that I'd want to eat. <laughs> it's actually quite gross. I don't think I'm going to be able to stay here. And then all the intestines. Now, ugh, I, have to, <coughs> I have to walk away. <laughs> so that moment where Taylor says reproducing at the beginning of drive and then gets sick live. Let's not have both of those in, in, in one day. Also, I want to put this away because I'm going to touch it. I don't want to touch it. I might have to wet wipe it just now. Put that there. Uh, so what's quite interesting about... All of this is normally we see uh, animals, they love to eat the intestines and the stomach lining. It's one of the first things that they go to. So it has to have some sort of vitamin that they crave or mineral or something in it. And the leopard didn't do any of that with a porcupine, which I find quite interesting. This is the first porcupine kill I've examined after a, a leopard has uh, feasted upon it. And I'm surprised that the hyenas haven't been here either. It was uh, very surprising to Sebastian and I because the stench is very powerful. Lots of food here for a hyena to eat. Okay, right, let's quickly do some disinfectant though, before I forget. So you're gonna watch me. I'm just gonna take a wet wipe out. Yeah, it's not really gonna sterilize this, but I don't want to touch this because I touch my face all the time and then I can put it in my eye or my mouth 
and that won't be good. So just wiping it clean with a baby wipe. Now, Mr. P from Canada, you're wondering if porcupines are dangerous. Most certainly, even to us as humans, you need to be careful because if one runs towards you, and they're not small either, porcupine probably stands, um, probably knees high with me, probably even with its quills, it'll be a bit, just a bit taller than my knee. So it's not a, it's not a small animal. And uh, if you get one of those quills and you can cause infection and all type of things. Luckily for us, we don't particularly eat them. Where I'm from though, the Eastern Cape of South Africa, porcupines are actually a delicacy. Where the cossas, the cossas love to eat them. They say, and I'm also gonna get, I, I spoke nonsense. I said I didn't have anything to wipe my hands with. Baby bum wipes. <laughs> Good for everything. Um, in the Eastern Cape, uh, it's really quite great. Uh, so they go after them. And, and I remember it's our biggest rodent in Africa, the porcupine. So they're a bit of a pest to the farmers. Again, Eastern Cape, heavily farmed pineapples, chicory, citrus. They've got a bit of everything growing around there. Uh, so it's a big, a big problem when a por group of porcupines, one porcupine, however many porcupines in the area go through it and just dig up all the roots. It can be quite devastating um, to, well, to all the crops and things like that. So the farmers don't like them. The locals eat them. They say it's delicious. Apparently, if you take the porcupine and you throw it on a fire, as is. I've never had one before. They say that it's um, like pork crackling, but something even better. Like, I, don't, I don't know how to describe the taste because I've never eaten it. So even the rodents are eaten out here. I'm just going to put this back there and throw that away later. I'm still too scared to touch my multi-tool, put that back in its pocket, and I think we're going to move away now from the porcupine. Now, Chitty Chatty Meg, let me unplug myself and replug myself, we're wondering if they regrow their quills after losing them. They do regenerate over time. The porcupine has got lots of quills, so even losing a few at night is not really going to make too much of a difference, but they do replace them. Right, now we need to try and get out of here without driving over leopard feces and any more carcass. And also there's lots of gremlins. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed just having a very quick look at that porcupine. I don't know much about their digestive system, so I'm quite intrigued now after all the intestines that I saw to do a bit of research about that.